Добро вечер. 22 часот време за емисија во центар на YouTube. Јас сум вас кајфто почитно и гледач, ви сте на вистинското место. Зошто бидејќи во нените 75 минути и ви и јас имаме право да ја знаеме вистината. Вистината во овие 75 минути ќе побараме во интервју со Сен Вакнин. Веројатно помладата публика не се сеќава на Сен Вакнин, таму некаде 97-98 година она економска полемика во вестникот Нова Македонија, вистинскиот стариот вестник Нова Македонија, помеѓу Никола Гуриевски и Сен Вакнин, подосна беше преточена во една економска книга, кога Никола Гуриевски станува министр за финанси или нашо дете кој станува министр за финанси, Сен Вакнин е неговите главни клучни економски советници. Кога Никола Гуриевски 2006 година станува македонски премиен, Сен Вакнин е дава на легендарна изјава или проценка дека двата најголеми бизнисмени или менаджери или луѓе со менаџер способности во Република Македонија се Свето Енерси Скопска пивара и Никола Гуревски. Тогаш ја правам проценката, тоа е првото или второто забрането интервју или првата или втората забраната емисија, оно интервју со Георги Спасов кој тогаш беше идеолог на СДСМ, кој велам дека Никола Гуревски ќе владе најмалку 8 години. Е тоа е Сен Вакнин. Со Сен Вакнин сега разговараме за тоа што се случува во Израел, што се случува во Газа, Разговори со Никола Гуревски, имал средби со Никола Гуревски, присуствал, живел во Руската Федерација, може ли Русија да победи против Украина? Дали Америка може да помогне во исто време на два фронта, на украинскиот, односно руско-украинскиот фронт и фронтот кој сега се отвора на Близкиот Исток, односите на Сунити, Шиити, Близкиот Исток, Арабскиот конфликт со Израел и така натам и така натам, или дали светот ке се смени и дали Израел може да победи во овој конфликт во Газа, 75 минути интервју, останете со нас, нема да зажалите. Добро вечер за Сен Вакнин. Не сме снимиле колко веќе, 12-13 години. Та ни е за тлист. години. Што прајев тој ве 10 години ве немаше, ве читавме по социјални мрежи, ТикТок, ве читавме на Твитер, ве читавме на други социјални мрежи. Вурно. I moved to Russia. I was uh, professor of psychology in Russia. I was advisor to many oligarchs and politicians in Russia for a few years. And then when the war in Ukraine started, I resigned from my position and I left Russia because all the foreigners were in danger in Russia. I left Russia and I moved to Hungary. I was in Hungary about a year and a half, two years, and now I'm back, back home. It's an interesting trajectory. Russia, and then to Hungary. You were in Macedonia, a man who did Nikola Gurevsky. Or a man who was the head of the Soviet Union, Nikola Gurevsky, who was the minister for finance. Now you've been after the election of Nikola Gurevsky, in the war in Ukraine. Did you leave Russia, stay for a year and a year, and stay for a year and a year in Hungary? Did you see the Gurevsky there? Yes, many times. What did you talk about? What did you talk about? As you went well know, I'm not going to tell you. Okay, let's talk about it. Yes, I'm not going to tell you. Okay, let's talk about it. Yes, I'm not going to tell you. 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 He's a very good friend of mine, he, and I'm a good, very good friend of his. We had very big differences of opinion. I was his biggest critic. I was his first critic, actually, when he became prime minister. I worked for a long time at the time with the opposition against Guevski, because I thought that he was going the wrong direction. But we never stopped being friends. There is the personal part and the political part. Same. Uh, Има, има желба да се врати, да се вклучи во политички живот во Македонија, бидејќи тоа нели сега актуелно. Гуевски? Гуевски, да, ќе се дели. I cannot discuss my conversations with a, with a personal friend, of course. Значи не за политика. I'm sorry? Not for politics. I, I didn't understand the question. Не разговарате за политика за Гуевски, само за персонални работи. Само за, only, само за храна. Само за храна? Yes, we're discussing the food. Which, which kind of wine is best, which kind of chicken is to eat chicken, to eat meat. This is very... All the time we discuss only this. <laughs> In Russia, I was twice, uh, two years and then four years. And in Hungary, I was about a year and a half. Do you expect that Russia will attack Ukraine? Do you expect that it will create an atmosphere? No. But it was clear that uh, Putin is becoming more and more dictatorial, more and more authoritarian more and more dangerous, more and more disconnected from the people, more and more crazy, actually. He developed extreme hypochondria, the pandemic destabilized him a lot. Uh, he created parallel structures, so he created a parallel army, he created a parallel state, which was totally under his direct control. The same way Hitler did, yes, when Hitler established the SS and the 
and so on. And then he continued to operate through the parallel state, not through the official state. And the official state was dying, was totally dysfunctional. And he worked with the parallel state. One element of a parallel state was Wagner Group and so on. I was operating in uh, South Russia. So I was operating in the area of Krasnodar, Rostov on Don, that so, area. Sochi. 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 Gelezhnik, yes. That okay. area. Rostov. Rostov Nelina. Yes. The area where no. the invasion of Ukraine started. It started from Rostov. Yes. 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 No, Avionska, uh, Avionska this, is the, this is Prigozhin, but da. the invasion of Ukraine, the first step against Ukraine, started from Rostov on Don. Yes. So I was in that area, and that area is the, the elites in this area, the oligarchs and so on, they don't like Putin. I would, call, I would call this area opposition area. Dobro, može li Putin da je dobija vojnata v Ukrajina? Napred da dojma z Izrael, ne li vidike, to je glavna ta tema. Može li Putin da je dobija vojnata v Ukrajina? Not in my view. I don't think so at all. I think he can stabilize the front line, he can maintain the occupation of Donbass and these areas, but these areas did not belong to Ukraine before the war, <laughs> even before the war. From 2014, these parts were cut off Ukraine and were more and more integrated with Crimea. And this is the way they built the bridge, the famous bridge and so on. They were creating... Uh, a, yes, they, they created a contiguous area. But Russia wanted also to expand it to the sea. So they wanted to conquer Odessa and this part. They wanted to create access to the, to the Black Sea, going all the way to Donbass and down to Crimea. And this way to create a state, in effect. That's the Yes. Yes. Bilo mnozinsko to naselenje, rusko, ruski se razgovaralo i predvili 14-ta i vo Harkiv, i vo Zaporožje i tako na tom i tako na tom. Kremija was always Russian, of course. Kremija was given to Ukraine by the Communist Party. It was never part of Ukraine. However, Donbass and these areas were historically part of Ukraine. The thing in Donbass is, of course, the resources. It's very mineral rich. It's a very rich country. Uh, country. It has minerals, it has uh, agriculture to some to big extent. Manufacturing, big part of manufacturing is there. To je bogata zemlja. To je uh, bogata. Ko, Donbass ko, area. Ko je ne bil, ko je ne bil v Ukrajina, to nego zna. Je. Yeah. Bakva je crna zemlja, tako kako yes. ova, što je Very nekada na yes. 15-20 cm se pojavila se pojavila voda i neliko kaj doja te proletne. It's the bread. Teško da se dviži tamo i tako. Yes, it's the bread basket. Not only of, of Europe, it's the bread basket of the world. The Russia and Ukraine together produce half the world consumption in grains, wheat, uh, and so on. Half. Hrana. Uh, uh, basic food. To, 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 like, uh, to, to isto za hrana go razgovara v Tesogurevski, ne li bi ki kako vili Tesogurevski, yes, samo yes. za hrana se razgovarali, verjetno i za, za, za ovo ste yes, razgovarali, well, pošto je sostaven del na, na hranata. Yes, it was all about hrana. Maksim, što se sluča v Izrael? Znači, minatata, minatata nedelo, odnosno pre tri dena, se slučava onaj upad na Hamas v teritorijata na južan Izrael. Mi tajte da počnemo od toga, što se zborova Gaza, zapaden brek, palestinska kriza in tako na tom. Nije ostarevme, a ušto od vremeto ne jaz si brosti, to slučavme Gaza, palestinci, zapaden brek in tako na tom. In tako na tom. Što de facto je Gaza, na primer, što de facto je zapaden brek, kada je konflikt od palestinsko-izraelski, Imaš jedno istraživanje, me razvirate, ne li? Da, da, da. sve imaš. Imaš jedno istraživanje koje biše objaveno v seriozni medijumi na Zapad. Kaj še opravat od redine analizi na sirijski narod, kaj še opravat na palestinski narod, na izraelski narod i vilad. Po tukaj gledame nekaj slična genetika v cela ta rabota. Osven religijeta, gore dole, tukaj gledame nekaj slična, govorime za starostredilcete, koji se tam. Ljudi na savat nekaj karte 46. godina, Palestina bila mnogo pogolema, pa ta so tek na godinite se namalova in tako na tom in tako na tom. A za žal, istorijata ne počne v 1946. godina, počne od 25, a po ne poveke veka, pred 1946. godina. Kada je suštinata na konfliktu ti kako jih završi? The konflikt je veliko simple. There is a small piece of land, it is the size of New Jersey. New Jersey is a tiny state in the United States. It's a small piece of land and two peoples, two peoples want the same piece of land. 
and they don't want the same piece of land 40, 60, 50, 50, 30. They want 100%. The Palestinians want 100% of this piece of land and the Jews want 100% of this piece of land. This is a mutually exclusive proposition. There is no way to solve this conflict. Now, at certain times, the Arab states surrounding Israel attacked Israel in order to help the Palestinians to get 100% of their territory. The Arab state, states failed. And when the Arab states' armies failed, Israel conquered even additional territory. They conquered the West Bank from Jordan. They conquered Gaza from Egypt, etc., etc. So Israel grew. They conquered Sinai. Sinai was three times the size of Israel. The Sinai Desert was three times the size of Israel. After that, there was a series of negotiations, starting with Kissinger. There were a series of peace accords, Oslo accords, these accords, that, and Israel gave up on Sinai, gave back Sinai to Egypt, and made peace with Egypt, made peace with other countries. Right now, Israel has peace agreements and diplomatic relations with six Arab countries. Bahrain, Morocco, Bahrain, Morocco, Morocco, Arab Emirates, yes. yes. So now six of them have. I did that. But, but, but let me. I did not answer. Okay. I did not finish okay. my answer. I want to uh, update you fully. So uh, the West Bank now is under the control of a Palestinian authority, something like a government. They have their own police. They have their own tax system, and so on and so forth. They are not allowed to have an army, but except for this, it's essentially. A state. To a fat, to a Fatah. And they, this is controlled no. by Fatah. Fatah is a political movement that used to be military movement, but now became almost 100% political. Gaza, on the other hand, is a totally different story. Fatah, Fatah, може да се смета како партија која е наследник на движењето на Јасер Арафат. Yes, PLO. Da. The successor to PLO, which was the military organization, Palestine Liberation Organization. Abbas, Nelly Abbas, and Achilla. Yeah, Abbas. Abbas. Abbas was a major figure in, in this and so on. So this is West Bank. This, Zapad Nelbrek. On the other side of Israel, so there is a West Bank, and then there is Israel in the middle. Israel separates the West Bank from Gaza. That's why two state solution is nonsense. There is no way to connect the West Bank to Gaza except if you cut Israel in half. So this whole thing is total delusion, total insanity. No way to connect. The only way is to cut Israel in the middle. It's the only way to connect. Yeah. And of course, this is, will never be done. So two-state solution is nonsense. Gaza is very tiny. Gaza is a strip. It is 50 kilometers long. Just 50 kilometers long strip. Некаде прочитав 41 километар и ширина 7 до 12 километри од прилика. Yes, it's tiny. It's the size, the size of a city, in effect, a big city. На Скопје, на пример, околу 25 километри од Скопје, значи нешто. Big city. Како Скопје со Катланова, Катлановска банја. Something like this. It's tiny. In this area, there are 2.1 to 2.4 million. No one knows exactly how much, but more than 2 million people. Значи да, еве, предпоставиме 2.5 милиона. About Probably closer to 2.1, but 2.1, 2.4. Okay. This makes this Gaza the most dense, most densely populated area in the world. It's much more dense than Hong Kong. Dobro, sinom, se sem ova mora da je prašam. Nekada pred 30 ili 40 godini tamo živele 380 ili dižitelji. Spored popisot, spored toga što je napraveno kod demografska slika i tako na tom. To se doloži samo na natalitetot ili ima odreden priliv na begalci i tako na tom i tako na Bogaza? 71% of the people who live in Gaza are Palestinian refugees from the territory of Israel. These are Palestinians that escaped from Israel to Gaza. 71% refugees and next generation, second generation of refugees. So... Gaza is a refugee od kade, camp. Od kade, od kade begalci? Uh, mostly from, from uh, the south of Israel, the center of Israel. They, kade, kašto, ne bi... Up to the center. Znači, the, north, ne... the north Palestinians, the Palestinians in the north, they escaped to Lebanon and to Jordan. Tako. The Palestinians in the center of Israel and the south, they escaped to Gaza. And some of them to the West Bank, but most of them to Gaza. So Gaza is a refugee camp. It's a giant refugee camp. And all the people of Gaza, 
this is not their home. They don't feel it's a home. They, they want to go back to their home. Би сакал тука една рамка да направиме. Професор Садрикари овелеше дека кога се гледа картата на Израел, тога се гледа дека Израел е мнозин свободност на арабскиот свет. Самата карта на Израел. Но кога би се качили на водно, на пример, и би можеле да гледате малце по-широко, тога сваќате дека Израел е капка во морето водност на арабскиот свет. И сега нели во Македонија бидеки помалку се чита и зато мора и во овие интервјуа нели да им се каже од прилика што е. Значи во рамки на арабски свет му доаѓаат Алжир, Марокко, Тунис, Либија, Египет, Јордан, делна, Сирија, делна Ливан, Ливан, Сирија и така натаму и така. Саудиска Арабија и така натаму. Иран Иран не е дел на no, не Иран е not Arab. Arabski. Iran is Persian. Ирак е но Иран, но Иран не е дел на... на Иранијанс хейт ди Арабс. Де е енемиз од ди Арабс. И од еднаш Иран ви се јавува како спонзор на Хамас. И Хезболах. И спонзор на Хезболах. Кој всушност представуват и закана, веретно, за нај, најмокната арабска држава, тоа е Саудиска Арабија. Кој има тамо проблем со хутите, војна се води веќе неколку години, хутите се поддржени исто така од Иран и така натаму и така натаму. И на крај, кој ке се сведи, целата математика, доаѓаме до некаков конфликт на Израел и на Иран или како Израел тоа го нарекува оската, оската на злото, пајжината на злото која се формира. Тоа е некоја рамка како, се, како може да се постават и да се поделат работите. И тоа ќе се обидеме да го објасниме сега, сега во емисијата. There is a conflict between the United States and Iran. Not Israel and Iran, but the United States and Iran. Israel is a long arm of the United States. The Arabs consider Israel a continuation of European colonialism, and after that, a colonial outpost of the United States. They, they regard Israel as an army base of the United States in the, in the region, stuck in the region. Yes, this kind of thing. So, it, Israel has become an enemy of Iran because Israel is identified in the eyes, in the eyes of all Muslims as an extension of the United States, the 51st state of the United States, not because of Israel itself, but because of the United States. That is on the strategic level. In addition to that, there is, of course, the religious issue, because uh, Iran, Hezbollah, Hamas, they are Shia, and the Shiites uh, regard Israel as illegitimate, and they regard the Jews as Ahl Dima. Ahl Dima means second-class citizens. So, second-class citizens in, in Islamic jurisprudence are not allowed to have a state. And to have a state, if, if second-class citizens have a state, is rebellion against God. So, this is considered in, in theology, in Shia theology, the ultimate sacrilege, ultimate blasphemy against God. And they have obligation, leg, um, religious obligation, to destroy the Jewish state. That is why... Hamas, in its charter, says that it has to destroy the Jewish state. Hezbollah the same. You have to use the formulation that Hezbollah and Hamas are Shiite organizations. Controlled by Shia. Controlled by Shia. Iran is Shia. Controlled by Shia. That is the conflict како католиците и православците, да речеме, ајде, за да можат гледачи тоа да го разберат, помеѓу сунитите и помеѓу шиитите. Шиитите се Иран. Сунитите се Саудиска Арабија. Yes. Кога се говори за трите свети места на муслеманскиот свет, нели третото место е ова джамија Ал-Акса, поради кој почне конфликт од 2021 година. И сега. И сега, нели? И денеска. Да, бидеќи израелските војници влегуа во, во Ал-Акса. Mm. Кои се двата, Мека и Медина? Мека, Медина и на Джерузалем. Значи, двете се наоѓа, двете се наоѓа во, во Саудиска Арабија, sure. едното се наоѓа во, во Иерусалим. Yes. Saudi Arabia is known in, in Islam as the keeper of the sacred places. The keeper of the sacred places. The guardian. Веќе пет или шест години се говори за некаков договор помеѓу Саудиска Арабија и Израел. Дека после... Ајде, вака да објасниме. Значи има две војни помеѓу Арабскиот свет и Израел на 1967 и на 1973 година. There were others, but yeah, these are the recent и, ones. Овие се големи, нели, војни што, што се сметат татковински војни или како да ги, како да ги наречиме. 1967 година Израел ги поразува арабските, ги поразува арабските држави. 1967 година војната исто така на 6. октомври. Is, uh, 73. 
Sedum streta, sedme streta. Isto taka na šesti, isto taka na šesti. Jom Kipur. It was Jom Kipur at the time, yes. Što je Jom Kipur? Jom Kipur is the most holy day in the Jewish religious calendar. It's the day where we ask God to forgive us. And if God doesn't forgive us, he, he, we are doomed to die that year. So Sve, this is a very Sve critical day. We fast, we don't eat. Sve, Sve den. The, the most holy. We don't eat the 24 hours. We pray all the time. Seko se pagia vo sabota ili... No. No. It, uh, um, a Jewish calendar is lunar calendar. Mm -hmm. Like Muslim calendar. Znači ko muslim maskiot yes. kalendar. Yes, and it's shifting all the time. Vojnata 73. godina, v sušnost, menuva del na strategijata na, na Izrael. Znači, 73. godina Egipet, Sirija i Irak. Znači, ne Liban, ne Ira, ne Saudijska Arabija, tako ove se tri državi, kada še v sušnost tija baz partijte. Jordan, Jordan, Sirija in... Da, kada še v sušnost tija baz, osven Jordan, ne li kaže kralsko semestvo, kada še ove baz partijte se načelo na, na državi. Ti Sadam Hussein, ili semestvo to na... Uh, vo Sirija što vlada i tako natamo i tako. I, ne znam, Egipet. To se baz parti, koji se za proarabski svet, za objedinovanje na arabskijo svet, ja. delumno može se smeti i moja mer El Gaddafi, da je kar pripagenata. Znači, tije državi go napagjat Izrael i tu ga še Izraelije, ko pobedo, svake deka mora da vleze v pregovori so arabskite zemi. I go praviti dogovor so Egipet, koja v sušno se ja. država, koja garantira za Hamas na neko način. Actually, Egypt took the initiative, not the Israelis. Uh, Egipetska. Egypt. Anwar Sadat traveled yeah. to Jerusalem in 1977, four years later. Egypt actually offered an identical deal before the war. Kissinger, six months before the war, came with a peace offer that was identical, 100% identical, to the peace agreement that Israel signed later, after the war. But Golda Meir at the time, the prime minister, rejected it. After the war, Israel accepted this. Egyptian offer. It was an Egyptian offer. Give, give back Sinai, we make diplomatic relations. After the war, uh, 73. Godina. After 73, four years later, in 1977, another Prime Minister, Begin, Menachem Begin, accepted the deal. To su one pregore Cape David, pa Nobelova nagrada, yeah. i taka natamo, i taka natamo. Znači, Izrael ima dobri odnosi su Egipet. Yes, I would say. Šest arapske države go priznavat yes. Izrael, i sega veke po dolgo vreme se pregovara za nekakov dogovor pomogu Izrael i Saudijska Arabija dva mokni sistemi, dve yeah. mokni državi, vojni sistemi i tako natom, i tako natom. I na nekoj nema odgovaranja. Ili prva rabota što ke pomislime, ne liko ke vidime što naprej Hamas vo sabotata pred 7-8 dena, deka se naprej vojna pobaranje na Iran, ili to je prvata logika koja se nametnula, za da bide sprečen dogovorat pomogu Izrael i pomogu Saudijska Arabija. Može li tu kada barame prečinata za vojna tako? I don't think uh, Iran initiated it, because Iran had, uh, had an interest to be on good terms with the West. Iran just received six billion dollars from the United States against uh, hostages. Iran is negotiating with the United States a renewal, a new version of the, of the nuclear deal that they had. Iran just joined BRICS, the BRICS uh, economic uh, bloc together with Russia and China and, and so on and so forth. So Iran is reintegrating into the world system. This is the last thing they need now. I don't think Iran was involved in this at all, actually. I'm pretty convinced they were not involved. But you're right that the Palestinians were worried. They were very worried. Israel is signing with Morocco, signing with the United Arab Emirates, signing with Bahrain, now he's signing with Saudi Arabia. No one is mentioning the Palestinians. No one is promising anything. The interests of the Palestinians are not represented. They are totally ignored, as if there are no Palestinians. As if the Arabs, the Arab world, accepted that there will not be a two-state solution. Except the reality. The reality. The prefect is real. Yes. Like Israel. Israel is in control, and that's it. Yeah. And that they need Israel to see more than a communication. Like they gave up on the Palestinians. Hamas wanted to show there will be no agreement of any kind, if you don't take into account the interests of the Palestinians. We can torpedo, we can sabotage any agreement at any minute. <laughs> we have allowed, we allowed agreement with Morocco, because Morocco is not relevant, not interesting. But we will not allow agreement with Saudi Arabia. It was pure Palestinian thing, not Iranian. Of course Iran is very happy, <laughs> because it sabotaged the agreement with Saudi Arabia. But I don't think Iran initiated. Normalno i Rusite se zadovoljni, i na njih im odgovara se. 
растегнува се развлекува вниманието на светот на светската политика на само вниманието there is a there is a realistic problem here absolutely there's no budget in the united states um, no budget at all by the way budget has not been agreed there's an insufficient money for both ukraine and israel these are two major conflicts the americans don't have enough money for both conflicts they don't know what to do now they sure. also don't have authorized budget so they are not allowed americans are not allowed suddenly to take money and give it to israel the congress must approve but there's no budget добро се ми сакал две две работи тука да да издебатираме прво поделено израелското општество поделено е на полиберални по екстремистички структури но и во самата партија на Нетаньяху се јавува некој внатрешен конфликт околу некои правни, уставни прашања, судски прашања така натаму и така натаму. Тој никаде е јануари, почетокот на февруари во менува министерот за одбрана, овој кој сега најмногу не ли го критикуваат, па по седум дена му е сторнира смената односно оставката и оставува на таа функција. Каде е конфликтот натрешен во Израел за да можеме да го анализираме подоцни конфликтот со арапите и конфликтот со американците и американската политика? There is a hard core in Israel of far right extremists and this hardcore believes that all of Israel, all the territory, should belong to the Jewish people. There should never be any compromise with the Palestinians of any kind. Not two-state solution, not one-state solution, no solution. So the occupation should continue, and Israel should be in control of everything, including Jerusalem. Al-Aqsa should become a Jewish uh, shrine, and so on and so forth. These extremists used to be uh, fringe, they used to be 1%, but now these extremists are in the government, in major positions. And the reason is because Netanyahu needs them for coalition building. Netanyahu has failed repeatedly to win absolute majorities. And so he became hostage to the far right, to the extreme far right. On the other hand, the left is not succeeding to challenge Netanyahu in any meaningful way except one or two years. Is, is failing. The West is failing. West has, uh, the left has no appeal to the left, has no appeal to Jewish voters, Jewish electorate. Because the left, the, the propositions, the proposals of the left, the political proposals of the left, could result in the extermination of Israel. That's the problem. They come up with solutions, they come up with programs and ideas. But it's very easy to show that if any of these programs goes wrong, it will be the end of Israel. Добро, има ли нета няколко контрола на неговата партија, на пример? Јас имам чувство дека е вови што е Јоав Галант, кој е министр за одбрана, кој од неговата партија го сменува, па нема сила да го смени, па мора да го задржи на таа функција и така натаму. Има ли нета няколко сега контрола на на својата партија? Now yes, but until a few days ago, no. So this, what happened, is very good for Netanyahu. Is uh, makes him a much stronger, much stronger position. He, he is now de facto dictator. He passed judicial reform, which weakened the Supreme Court dramatically. He acquired now emergency war powers. He, Israel now is under emergency war regime. He doesn't need uh, the Knesset to pass legislation. He made a unity government a few minutes ago with uh, with the left with guns. So now he's he's a dictator of Israel, absolutely. What will happen after the war is over? I don't know because he is also responsible for what happened for the disaster. Kedo ime i dom natrešni prašen en Izrael. Turcija poslednite deset godini se vmešuva vo a kriza pomigu palestincite i pomigu Izrael. Флотилата, мислам дека 2011 година е па турска помош, па Ердоган и така натаму и така натаму. Иако тој дел нели на Блискиот исток беше дел на Османската или Отоманската империја. Ердоган сега дава, веројатно после Иран, Ердоган дава највоинствени, најзапалливи, не знам, ставови, тези, присуство на американците, присуство на американската морнарица, на носач на авиони и така натаму и така натаму. Каде се јавува тој конфликт на Турција и на Израел последните 10, 12 години, односно кога Ердоган веќе станува мокен лидер во исламскиот во исламскиот свет, а тоа се совпаѓа некаде со арапската пролет 2011-2012 година. Ердоган is playing the global statesman. He is not only involved between Israel and Palestine, he is involved between Russia and Ukraine. Yes. He he brokered the famous uh, in Libya problem in Libya. Libya and here and there. He is thinking of himself as a global statesman 
who is resolving conflicts everywhere. I don't think there is any specific focus on Israel and Palestine because of Turkish interests. I think this is part of his image building as a, as a statesman who is solving all the world problems. If you have a problem, you come to Erdogan and Erdogan will solve it for you. you know, he, will, he will make peace, he will... And so on. So Except for Azerbaijan, so Nagorno Karabakh. Everywhere. Is, Erdogan is everywhere. He even got involved in something in Latin America. He is, he, Erdogan is the peacemaker of the world. He is the, you know. Now, of course, Erdogan has, uh, has some status, some position uh, in Palestine and in Israel. So there he has more access, more, more weight, you know. Israel is in good relations with Turkey recently. Before, there were, of course, clashes. And, But Israel is relatively, in a relatively good, or let's say in the same kind of relationship with Turkey as Russia. Russia also had, had uh, clashes with Turkey and now they are talking. So Erdogan has access to both sides. Erdogan's access is much better than, for example, United Arab Emirates. Qatar is trying to make peace, but Qatar is compromised. Saudi Arabia cannot talk to half the, to the Palestinian half. <laughs> So they are not in position to make peace. They are not in position to negotiate. Americans, of course not. Um, Russians are in position to talk to both parties and Turkey. These are the two interlocutors, the two intermediaries that are possible. I believe fully we will see Russia soon. Kako na primjer vi bi definirali odnosite na Turcija i na Iran? Da rečem je granica, imate na dolga granica, ima Turcija ili dolga granica so Irak, ima dolga granica so so Iran. Iran tamo gore graniči do Azerbejdžan. Se špekuliraše, da Iran ne je najstrekjen od vlegovanja to na Azerbejdžan v Nagorno Karabah in tako natamo, in tako natamo, no ostana miren Iran. Vnatraj v Iran ima nekakov konflikt, pred ena godina beš oni konflikt okolo smrta na devojčijo in tako natamo, in tako natamo, na poliberalni in na poradikalni strukturi. Ova što je republik, Islamska republikanska garda pred dve godine ili beše v oni atentat eliminiran njevniot lider, pa se pojavi nov lider, pa se somničeše da Izrael stoji okolo celata ta arabota i tako natamo i tako natamo. Kako bi definirali vi te odnosi pomegu Iran i pomegu Turcija? Ne li ramkata je davam sega na se ona što se slučuje v, v Izrael? Turkey and Iran is an entirely different story. Turkey needs Iran as a religious hinterland, religious backup. And it needs, although Turkey is Sunni, of course, but it needs Iran as a religious backup on the bridge to the Turkic people in Central Asia. It, they need a friend. On the way to Central Asia, they need a friend. They, don't, they cannot have an enemy. They need a friend. And so they are keeping on friendly. Additionally, of course, there is the problem of the Kurds in uh, Iraq. So, and some Kurds in Iran as well. So Iran can be very useful. Uh, also as a staging ground, if necessary. If at one point Turkey will decide to conquer part of Iran and kill all the Kurds or do something there, that uh, Iran would be needed as a staging ground and, and so on and so forth. So Turkey is keeping all these strategic options open with Iran as a bridge to Central Asia and as a bridge to Iraq, which is why I think persijskiot prestol na Iran se naoge vo 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 Turcija od druga strana turskata elita nekada pred jedan ili pred dva veka govori persijskiot jazik kako oficialen kako službeni ili kako jazik na elitata tako da ti odnosi se malku i istorijski sekako yes. isprepleteni što se veli yes. deka persijskiot jazik je mnogo pobogat mnogo poubav so mnogo poveke znaci so poveke zborovi deka va turska elita osmanlijskata elita vo vremena sultanita sakala da govori to jazik za da pokaže deka se razliko od plepsot odnosno od narodot. Iran je nešto povozvišeno, ne li? Ja, Naslednici na Persijsko, na Persijsko to carstvo i tako natamo, i tako natamo. Stara, stara imperija, što se vika. Ja. In, the, in the time of, uh, of Macedonia, da. Iran was uh, the cultural center, the, was the super, the super power. Znate, što ne mi jasno se? Palestinski od narodo vreme to ne ja se rarafat, ovaj, se smetaše kako intelektualno moke nema svoja država i bidi ki nema svoja država beja del na kabinetite del na političkite eliti i vo Liban i vo Jordan i ne znam vo Egipet vo Sirije i tako natamo i tako natamo pa podo se pa evo intifadata pa sega ne znam Hamas i tako natamo Hezbollah delom na neli Fatah je mnogo pomiru ljubiva kada se gubi 
таа интелектуална структура на палестинскиот народ кој секогаш го нарекува во наводници како елита на арапскиот на арапскиот свет. You must make very strong distinction between the Palestinians that live that live in Gaza, in Gaza, the Palestinians that live in West Bank and the Palestinians in the diaspora. And the Palestinians in the diaspora, you must distinguish between those who are in the camps in Lebanon and Jordan and those who are in Europe and in America and so on. The Palestinians in Europe, America, they are in, uh, intelligent, intellectual, well-educated, erudite, well-read, integrated, cosmopolitan, integrated in all the... Same with the Palestinians in the West Bank. They're the same. They are educated, cosmopolitan, well-traveled, and so on and so forth. The Palestinians in Gaza are not. These are mostly villagers. These are people who, who were peasants. They were villagers. They escaped from their villages to Gaza. So the population there is much lower level, much lower level. Same in the camps, much lower level population. The, uh, that's number one thing that you should remember. Another thing you should remember is that Hamas is an Islamic movement. Uh, Fatah is a secular movement, a party, like any political party, but Hamas is an Islamic movement. So this is a process of Islamization a radicalization uh, not much different to ISIS нешто слично на овие талибанците а ISIS ISIS not Taliban but ISIS ISIS yes absolutely ISIS значи тоа што го прави е во Сирија да да речеме Hamas Hamas is a acronym acronym да Hamas is a haraqatul muqawamiyah islamia el islamia islamic the word Hamas is islamic што што значи тоа Ah, sorry, um, a movement for resi- uh, Islamic resistance. Mm-hmm. It's Islamic. Um, значи, шериатски закон, yes, absolutely. каменување, камшекување. Absolutely, it, identical to Iran. Who, who invented the name Hezbollah? Uh, Khomeini. Khomeini. Khomeini gave the name Hezbollah to Hezbollah. <laughs> These are absolutely extensions of the theocratic regime in Iran. And they are much more extreme even than the theocratic religion. Hezbollah is Hezbollah is власт на некој начин во во Либан или кашо се три религи три групи така на. Hezbollah is the strongest power in Lebanon. They are the Radwan Brigade, the military side of Hezbollah, is bigger than the Lebanese army. Hezbollah is the danger, not Hamas. Hamas is a joke. To to сака да ја прашам. Лете, имаше имаше еден временски период кога Катар сака да огради нафтоводот кој треба да стигне до западна Европа. И тогаш се случуваат кризите и во Либан, се случува кризите и во Сирија и така натаму и тоа го нарекуваат некаков шиитски берлински зид кој го дели Блискиот исток на два дела. Таму е Иран. Има многу шиити во Ирак, без разлика што во Ирак сунитите и Садам Хусен беа на влад, таму била дека повеќе од 50% се шии или тука некаде приближно се шиитско население. Па имаме Сирија иако ова династија сега се лавитска династија, сепак шиитите имаат многу битно влијание, па Халауи, Халауи. Да, имаат многу битно влијание и во Либан и така натаму и дека треба русите со помош на шиитите бидејќи има некои толкување дека рускиот тип на православие е многу близок до шиитскиот модел на на практицирање на вера и така натаму и така натаму дека со помош на шиитскиот елемент успева да го поделат блискиот исток на на два дела да не дозволат катарскиот нафтовод односно гасовод If you look at the map you will see that Israel is a buffer buffer between Shia part and Sunni part Yes, yes. Israel is exactly, exactly between the two Exactly yes and they are fighting inside Israel they're simply fighting inside Israel They're using Israel territory to fight. Yes. Or to fight, to negotiate agreements like Saudi Arabia. Saudi Arabia is a Sunni. Sunni, they, and they want Sunna, and they want power in, in that buffer. Whoever controls the buffer will determine the fate of Islam. This is a war about the fate of Islam. This has little to do with Israel. It's a, fa- it's a war about the future face of Islam. Will it be Shia? Will it be Sunna? Now, what's the difference... Shia in Sunna, Sunna in uh, in uh, the Shiites and the Sunnis in uh, Islam, they are dramatically different, dramatically different. First of all, they don't agree about the succession of Muhammad. They don't agree who succeeded Muhammad. But even more importantly, let me give an example. Shia, the Shia, have no central authority. Catholics have the Pope, mm-hmm. Jews have the chief rabbi, mm-hmm. Sunna have, but. 
Shia has no central authority. It's totally Wikipedia, <laughs> totally diversified. Mm -hmm. Everyone can make its own law, its own rule. Its own, it's very chaotic, very... Teško se kontrolira. Impossible. Teško se kontrolira. Da? Impossible, very chaotic. Khomeini and Khamenei and so on, they are uh, exception. They, are, they actually imported a Sunni model of governance and imposed it on the Shia, which is why Iran is not stable. Iran is not stable because the population is Shia, but the governance structure is Sunni. Sunni. So it's a second example. The third example, the Shia uh, believe, definitely believe in aggression and war and violence as a way, a legitimate way to accomplish religious goals. Absolutely. The Sunnah are more into business, negotiation, peace, uh, you know, they are more <laughs> advanced if you wish. The Shia believe fully that you have a religious obligation to impose Islam and uh, with a with sword. Yeah. the Hezbollah, which is controlled by the Shia, that is a serious problem, not Hamas. Hamas is a joke. Hamas killed thousand da. Jews, so da. it's not, it's a, it's a <laughs> bad joke. And the Hezbollah, 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 and the country. Hamas is a terrorist organization. And the, the military of Hamas is a joke. Everyone is saying, wow, look what Hamas did. What did Hamas do? They used some explosives. And they moved with motorcycles. Yes. That was all. Hezbollah is a state. Yes, Hezbollah, for example, I'll give you one example. Hezbollah has as many commandos as the Israeli army. Israeli army has about 10,000 commandos. Hezbollah is 8,000. And the commando of Hezbollah is as good as the as Israeli commando. They are known as good. They are called Radwan, Radwan Brigade. Israelis are terrified of Radwan Brigade. Terrified of them. What commando is in Hezbollah? Yes. It's very, very powerful commando. And 11,000 against 10? No, 10,000 and 8. 8,000. Hezbollah has 8,000. 8,000. Yes, 8,000. This is the commando only. Hezbollah also has an army bigger than Israel. Israel has a standing army of 70,000. Hezbollah has a standing army regular army of 100,000, you know, and they're good fighters. Hezbollah are good fighters. They train all the time with the best instructors and, you know, they are a really good army. Israel is afraid of Hezbollah. Okay, they didn't manage to win for 10 years or in a war. In the charter of Hezbollah it says that the goal number one to drive away the Israelis from Lebanon. Goal number two to... to liberate all the Lebanese territories, like the Shaba farms. And goal number three is to dis destroy the state of Israel, to eliminate the state of Israel. Same with Hamas. Same in the charter. It now is starting. It is now starting. It is starting to take responsibility for rockets. Until now, there were rockets and so on, and Hezbollah didn't say anything. Starting yesterday, Hezbollah is saying, yeah, it's us, we are attacking. When we saw this interview, Streda, on the 11th October, we thought it was going to be changed, to do something, so now we Hezbollah to enter. I think Hezbollah is preparing to enter, yes, to enter the situation. Can Israel hold that war at that time? Israel can cope with Hezbollah and Hamas, but Israel will be defeated if in addition to Hezbollah and Hamas, there will be problems in West Bank and the Arabs inside Israel. There are one million Arabs inside Israel. Inside. Who live? Inside. They are Israeli citizens. One million Israeli citizens. Jerusalem, Eastern Jerusalem. Everywhere. Haifa, Nazareth, Jerusalem, you name it. Everywhere. They're everywhere. If the million Arabs inside Israel, who are Israeli citizens, revolt, together with the West Bank, together with Hezbollah, together with Hamas and Syria, because I think if Hezbollah attacks, Syria will join. 
Then we, I... znači, ako, ako Hezbollah vlezi vo vojna, znači mora i Sirija da, da vlezi spored vas. I think if Hezbollah enters, uh, Syria will enter. Don't forget, they are allies. To tamo, kjer, za, and... Zapaden brek, pa ki vidi, Golanska visoramnina, pa taka na tamo... Ta... It will be everywhere, and uh, se, se kade, se kade. it will be five, five fronts. Five. And Israel is thin. It's a thin... Israel, Israel is 20 kilometers from the West Bank to the sea. Na, taka, ne, ne liko prava analiza, za da može gledačite da razberat Hrvatska, koja je kako kifla, koga imaše vojne, ne li, vo, na prostorno paranošnje Jugoslavije, tesna je Hrvatska, ne li, pa duri tamo, kaj Petrnje, kaj Zagreb ima nekoj stesnuvanje 80-100 km, znači ne je. In Izrael is 20. Ovo je ušte pomalce, znači... 20? Da, znači ovo, znači, i taka na tamo. 20 km, 10 minuta by car. 10 minuta so, so, automobil. Yes. So... Israel cannot survive if there will be five attacks from five uh, centers. Spored, spored vas, imaš li Hamas prethoden dogovor so, so Hezbollah ili so neki? No, I, I believe they were in contact and, and so on, but I, I don't think. They, because if they had a agreement, they would have attacked simultaneously. The impact would be disaster. Znači, Izrael bez pomoč na Amerikance te ne možda izdrži? Ili ne možda je dobija vojna taj? Ajde, lahko da definiramo. It is very worrying that the the way the way the Americans are entering the conflict because it reminds me 100% of Vietnam. Vietnam exactly. In, Vi- in Vi- no, no Vietnam. No Vietnam. In Vietnam Americans started with advisors. Advisors. They were not soldiers, advisors. And ammunition. Ammunition. Komunistički od tine komunistički. And and Americans Vietnam. moved, they moved destroyers. They moved destroyers to the Gulf of Tonkin next to Vietnam. This is the American playbook. You move navy, you provide ammunition and weapons, and you send advisors. This is how Vietnam war started. Exactly. Znači Putin sega treba da sedi, da gleda i da ги трие рацете, не ли да очекува да дојде до It's a major major beneficial development for Putin, yeah. Во моментов. Major. America cannot support two wars exactly like Israel cannot fight five wars. <laughs> Pet, pet vojni, pet konflikti, kako velite, to je, to je teško da se, yeah. da se izdrži, znajete, i mašinirijete na Hitler, needs, needs. i mašinirijete na Hitler počne da, da ko otvori nekoliko fronta, yes. kako ne možeš da ga izdrži. Yes. Ili, Hitler tjel... was defeated by two fronts. Yes. <laughs> so, Israel will be defeated if there are four, five fronts, especially from the inside, especially da, one ima. million from inside. And America will not be able to support Ukraine and Israel at the same time. There will come a point, now one week, ten weeks, four, I don't know when, there will come a point that America will have to decide who they support, Ukraine or Israel. Then, if they choose Israel, they will force Ukraine to make an agreement with Russia. Force. Ke ge naterat. Yes. Ke ge naterat. They will force. Vite, se sem, znači nekada je 2015. godina. Netanyahu pobedova i stanova premier dva meseci prethodno. I odi vo rabotno ili oficialno, kako da je narečime poseta na Sunetet Amerikanske države 2015. godina, na pokana na Amerikanskiot kongres. Togaš predzatel na Amerika, znači prv čovjek na belata kuke je Barack Obama. Obama, no na čelo na kongresu sa nogat republikancite, odnosno partijata na, yes. na Donald Trump. I give a speech in Congress. Da. Ima govor vo, vo kongresot, na koji ne prisusvojat demokratite. Nego prima prv pat se slučio vo istorija na amerikansko izraelske odnosi, izraelski premier da dojdi во посета официјална или работна на Америка, да не биде примен од првиот човек на Белата куќа. Джозеф Бајден е тогаш подпредседател. Итно му излегува некоја работа во Јужна Америка. Хилари Клинтон е министрка за, за надворешни работи, така натаму и така натаму. А предходното гостување на Танјаху било 10 или 15 пати прекинато, тоа е 3 години предходно, или 4 години предходно, 2011-2011, било 10-15 пати прекинато од аплаузи кои ги има во Американскиот, во Американскиот конгрес. Те односи на демократите кои се сега на власт во Белата куќа и Нетанјаху, никош не биле исклучително добри. Постојано му, му замерале, му замерале за истекување на тајни. Уш, и тогаш администрацијата на Барак Обама сакаше договор да направи за нуклеарната програма со Иран. Водеа преговори со Иран, што не му се допагеше на Нетанјаху и на Израел и на таа политика која го поддржува Нетанјаху Израел. Како ќе ги дефинирате тие односи сега во моментов? Американски со, со Нетанјаху Biden... и со, со, со Израел? Biden, for Biden, it's a nightmare. He is, uh, he has to support and strengthen Netanyahu. That's for him a nightmare. He, Israel and Netanyahu are a package deal, and he has to accept Netanyahu, and he has to support, and he has to keep him alive somehow. And of course, Biden 
uh, days before was again criticizing Israel for the judiciary reform, for the weakening of the Supreme Court. He was saying that uh, a democracy is threatened in Israel, that uh, sh sh this reform should not continue. He, was he told Netanyahu directly when Netanyahu went to the White House. He told him directly, this must stop, this judiciary reform. The country was falling apart. Israel was falling apart. There were demonstrations of well over one million people every weekend uh, for months, for seven months, eight months, against the ju judicial reforms. But the judicial reforms were only one part. There, was also, there were also problems with budgets. There were introduction of ultra-religious and ultra-far-right people into the government. There, were, there was a mess. Israel was disintegrating. Very near civil war. I will make a prediction that when this war is over, whatever happens, even if it's a major victory, whatever happens, is next stage is another war, civil war, between left and right in Israel. I'm almost convinced of it. No problem. Sim. Tie prikazni moknuti izraelsko lobi, ili moknuti evrejsko lobi, ili mjesto Izraela se evreni tako na tamo, nije gi slušane tije prikazne 30-40 godine, ne li ušte od vremato na jo se brostito medijumite v poranešna sa Fregoslavije to prašanje se koš go tretirale. I da ka se koj koj pripagje ili je blizog do toga mokne evresko lobi napredo ovo karijerata i tako na tamo i tako na tamo. Znači nešto slično što o Makedonija se govori, vlaško lobi koja go drži biznisot, gima parite, ima mok politik i tako na tamo. Koliko je mokno to evresko lobi v momentu? Ne je tako da je tako da je. It used to be very strong in the 70s and 80s. There were kingmakers if you went against the Jewish lobby, against the interests of Israel and so on. But since Israel was hijacked by far right, by Netanyahu, by this kind of people, by, by cr criminals, many of them have criminal records, you know. Since Israel was hijacked by this kleptocracy, by this group of, by this criminal gang, uh, of course Israel lost a lot of support. And the Israeli lobby is having, was having very difficult times uh, on many decisions. For example, decisions connected, connected to supply of weapons to Saudi Arabia and similar, where the lobby objected, but it went through. I have the feeling that in Iran, in Russia, in Turkey, in this garniture in Israel, in Saudi Arabia, they have to respond to the agency struktura slična na Donald Trump ili na Donald Trump na čelo na sanitet amerikanske države. I si te tije gi čekat izborite v Amerika nojemvri narednata nojemvri narednata godina. Na Rusiji je ključno da izdrži do nojemvri narednata godina, da može da učestva javno ili tajno so podrška na Donald Trump, Izrael isto taka, verjetno Saudijska Arabija. Imaš analiza v mokni американски медиуми и таа анализа на луѓе нели кои се познаваат кои го познаваат блискиот исток со тобите блискиот исток велат дека четирите клучни сојузници на Америка во изменатите 50 или 60 години тоа е Египет тоа е Турција тоа е Израел дека е Саудиска Арабија дека во моментот се многу поблиски до Русија имаат многу подобри односи со Руската Федерација со Путин отколку што имаат со оваа администрација во во белата во белата куќа и дека Всушност, нели ти сугерира тогаш на Америка, дека таа треба да ги има само овие свои бази, што ги има тамо некаде Емирати, Бахерин и така натаму, нека со помош на тие бази треба да има контрола на регионот, а да не се вплетко во односите ни во Израел, ни во Турција, ни во Египет, ни во Саудиска Арабија. На крај мора да се вплетка. Некој ќе натера да се и што вели Ердоган, тоа е мал чекор до голема голема војна. Depends if uh, Iran will uh, will enter the picture directly. Israel will use this as an opportunity to attack Iran, and I mean attack with military power. Yeah. Um, I don't believe Iran will get involved. No. I don't believe Iran will get involved. No, I believe Iran will stay away. It's going well. Why should it get involved? <laughs> it will stay away. Yes. Whatever happens is going well. Whatever happens is going well. Hamas destroyed the reputation of the Israeli intelligence community, destroyed the reputation of Israeli defense forces. Hamas, whatever happens to Hamas, it succeeded. It succeeded to destroy the image of Israel as a strong country that is invincible. The deterrence, it's called deterrence, you know. Um, deterrence means that you're afraid to attack me. Now Israel is... Defeated in this sense. Sizvino, 
она во една 17-та година завршува со договор. Иако Израел нели губи на почетокот, па подоцна се враќа и успеа да ги победи овие три или четири арапски држави, Египет, Сирија и така натаму, нели Ирак, што што напаѓаат делумно делумно Јордан, меѓутоа овие три арапски се сирската, овие египетската и ир, ирачката армија. И таму е всушност битката околу контрола на Суецкиот канал, Сина и Нели од едната страна, другата страна и така натаму и така натаму и тој Синајски, како да го наречам полуостров, всушност со, со, со таа војна и со нејзин договор помеѓу Египет и Израел припаѓа на Египет. Сега Египет има целосна контрола на, на, на Суецкиот канал. Египет за, за возврат гарантира на некој начин за Хамас. Дури вела дека дел од египетските разонавачки структури седум дена пред конфликтот му дават информации на Нетанјаху, високо функционер на египетското разузнавање му се јавува на Нетанјаху и така натаму. И така натаму. Ко ќе погледните Газа, гледате дека некаде на, на, на север и на исток граничат со, со, со Израел, на запад граничат со, со, со море и така натаму. Има многу мал маневарски простор Газа. Газа зависи повеќе од 50% од електрична енергија од, од Израел. Ако Израел е укине струјата, нема да има струја по, по Газа. И тоа го комплицира целиот овој проблем. It's not a pistol, so it's 75%. 75% of electricity comes from Israel. Uh, more than half the budget comes from Israel. Israel is financing the budget of Hamas, 50, close to 50%. It is done through a mechanism of VAT refund, <laughs> DDV. <laughs> um, food, medication, Israel has full monopoly on this. Everything. Yes, because uh, Gaza is under siege since 2006, late 2006, is under siege. Mm -hmm. No one is allowed in, no one is allowed out, out except through Israel. Israel also controls the coast. There is there's constant Israeli naval presence. It is total blockade, blockade. Gaza is in total blockade. Gaza has two exits. One is Erez, Erez is a transit point, mm -hmm. and one is Rafah. Mm -hmm. Rafah is exit to Egypt, Erez is exit to Israel. Israel um, allows, depending on the period, depending on how, how well they manage with Hamas, Israel allows between 60,000 and two, three 300,000 people from Gaza to work inside Israel mm -hmm. and to bring back money home and so on and so forth. Now Israel closed off the electricity, the fuel, the water, the medication and the food. So now there's no electricity in Gaza. Shortly there will be no water, there's no fuel, no medication. Човеки од Газа се всушно сковија наши патриоти, овие што се со Александар Македонски, што земале бугарско државјанство, што да работат у Германија и се бунат против против НАТО. И парите што во НАТО држава ги добиват и ги враќаат назад во Македонија, значи овие значи од Хамас се нешто слично, не мислам воен дел туку во ментал некој дел, зависи од Израел, а ја мрзат од НАТО на душа Израелска држава што борат против Израел. Израел also disconnected Gaza from the financial system. For example, Gaza had very big deposits in Bitcoin, mm -hmm. in cryptocurrency. And Israel froze all these accounts, intervened in the ledger and froze the accounts. So Gaza now has no money also, no, mon no money outside, nothing. They cannot organize flotilla, for example, they have no money. Mm -hmm. So Gaza is under total siege. Uh, Egypt closed the Rafah crossing. So Egypt actually collaborates with Israel. Israel blocked from this side, Egypt blocked from this side. And they are not totally blocked, they cannot cross to Egypt also. Egypt, Egypt, Egypt uh, government hates the Hamas. They are enemies. They are not friends, they are enemies. Saudi Arabia is not enemy of Hamas. Yes. Hamas is not, is not loved by anyone. Hamas is no friends, except Iran. Even most Palestinians, one of the main reasons that Hamas organized this operation, in 2021, Hamas popularity was 53%. In 2021, there was an enquête mm -hmm. on all the Palestinians, about 3, 4 million, and Hamas received 53%. Fatah, 17 or 14, I don't remember, mm -hmm. 17 or 14. Mm -hmm. But Hamas was 53. Two years later, 2023, a few weeks before the operation, two, three weeks ago, uh, Hamas went down from 53 to 31. Oh. So Hamas wanted to be popular again, mm -hmm. and this operation was to be popular again. Mm -hmm. no. right. We are the ones. We are fighting the Israelis, not Fatah. Fatah are corrupt, and so we are fighting. We are the fighters. We have a lot of Železna kupola. Drom, dom, takali se 
се нарекува Iron, Iron Dome. Iron, Iron Dome, да, така ли се, се нарекува, па Мосад, па израелски служби, па израелско оружје. Па нели се водеа преговори ако има ирански дронови на страна на Русија со помош на тие шехади руската армија нели ги напаѓа украинските позиции, дека може би Зеленски кој има еврејско потекло дека треба да ги доби овие железни куполи, овој Iron Dome што се вели од од Изра. И тоа се руши како кула од карти после египетската војска која или од 1973 година влегува на територија на Израел. Прв пат се случува Хамас и структури на Хамас во нејзин јужен дел на Израел да влезат, да заземат градови, да убијат деве луѓе, да упаднат на оние фестивал музички така натаму и така натаму. И израелските служби, израелската армија, израелските безбедносни структури абер да нема да не реагираат прв пат да се збунети така натаму и така натаму. This is complicated question, so I will one by one. Start with the Mossad. Mossad and intelligence. Mossad is not in charge of intelligence inside Israel. It's not legal for Mossad, Mossad to operate inside Israel, only outside. Inside Israel there is Shabak. Shabak is another security agency, internal security agency. It's mostly failure of Shabak, not of Mossad. But it's a failure, of course, of intelligence. It's a failure not because they did not have information that this is going to happen. They absolutely had information that this is going to happen. How do I know? Because I had this information, and you had this information. Hamas posted videos, public videos, that it is about to attack Israel, and even there is a video where they simulated, they made a simulation of a kibbutz. And in the video, they enter the kibbutz and they kill everyone on the video. <laughs> and Hamas sent WhatsApp messages to many Israelis, including some Israelis that I know personally, many Israelis saying, your Sukkot, your holy day, will be a black one. Be, be ready, your last day of Sukkot, Sukkot will be a black one. So they gave the date. On videos they gave the event, and after that they gave the date through WhatsApp. <laughs> In addition to that, there is some reason to believe that Israel received a warning from the Egyptian intelligence. Egyptians denied and Israel is denied. But Egyptians, at the beginning, insisted that it is true. After they had pressure from the United States and so on, they suddenly said, no, it was not true. But for four days, they said, it's true. Suddenly, it's not true. Okay, so I believe that there was warning from Egyptians. Of course there was warning. How can Hamas do this? Egyptians are everywhere. It's absolutely, they're much better inside Gaza than Israelis, you know. Take into account, for example, that in Gaza, about two or 300,000 people are double nationality, Egyptian and Palestinian. Mm -hmm. but for sure, Egyptians knew. And they would share the intelligence with Israel, of course. So Israel knew. It was not a question of knowing. They knew. They did not believe. They did not believe. They moved all the forces to the West Bank, because in the West Bank, in the last year, there are many, many clashes, many, many skirmishes, many fighting, shooting, mess. The West Bank is a mess in the last year. So they moved, and there was a holiday there with settlers, of the settlers, you know, the settlements. There was a holy holiday, the most, you know. And so they moved all the army to the West Bank to protect the settlements. Very few army units were left in what is known as the Gaza Command. The Gaza Command had very, very few units left. 90, 95, I don't know, percent were moved to the West Bank. When Israeli commanders questioned this and so on and so forth, they were told that Hamas now is focused on economic development and political dialogue and there's no need to worry. They are just, all these videos and all this information is just posturing, just to restore their popularity. They're not going to do anything. This is point number one. This is an intelligence failure, not because the information was not there, but because it was not believed. So, to verify that so Hamas has good communication, that they have control. Yes, in the last few months, uh, Israel made very co many concessions to Hamas. For example, that she invested in Hamas. Israel. Not invested, but it made concessions. For example, it gave sixty thousand new uh, permits mm -hmm. for people from Gaza to work in Israel. Mm -hmm. They were. There were all kinds of gestures. Misla deka ekonomske može da... Yeah, exactly. Da gi normalizira to. They could bribe Hamas, they could buy Hamas. Da korumpirat. Yes. Ajde, da rečeme. Korumpira politikli. Politikli, da. 
forget the occupation, we will give you work in Israel. Kako i kad parite vrta tamo kaj šo Burgija ne može, ne li otprilike, to je i filozofija ta. And this is how Hamas started. Israel invented Hamas. Hamas was created by Israel. Israel created Hamas to oppose Fatah. Israel introduced Hamas to Hezbollah. Israel took Hamas people, nine of them, and introduced them to Hezbollah in Lebanon. It's incredible. Everything that is happening, Israel did. It's a mess. It's a, a, exactly like America and Mujahideen. America and Al-Qaeda. Yes. America created Al-Qaeda. Yes. <laughs> Same with Israel. Is it the 11th September? Hamas is creation of Israel. And to this very day, they have this illusion that they can buy Hamas. Yes, the 11th September is for Israel. Yes. So this is point number one. Iron Dome. Iron Dome is a very effective system. It's about 90% effective. But it's very limited. Iron Dome is a unit that has 10 subunits. They are called batteries. 10 subunits. In each subunit, there are 20 missiles. The 20 missiles are called Tamir. So you have 20 Tamir missile multiply by 10 battery. You have 200. Each unit is 200. There are only 10 units in all Israel. There are only 10. 10 multiplied by 200 is 2,000. If you are sending at once 3,000, 2,000 will be destroyed. You know, 1,800 yes. will be destroyed, but 1,200 will not be destroyed. They are not Tamir missiles, physical. So if all the Iron Dome elements are operational, they can destroy 1,800 missiles at any given moment. So if you send at the same time 3,000, 1,200 will fall. Let's show you the fatia. Kako nije veli mi na kondicija gi fatija, na, 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 na brojka, na, yes. na brojnost, na masivnost. Hamas simply saturated the system. It simply sent so many missiles that Iron Dome was ran, znači, napravi, ran out of missiles. Znači napravili matematika, kako funkcionira, video kako da. funkcionira, koji se slabi točki, kako se slabi točki, to yeah. go napravi. I go preplavije nebo to. So, yes. so raketi. Yes. Koji može nese Hamas sopit. Hamas sent anywhere between 2,500 and 3,000 missiles within less than four minutes. So. I dojeme do izraelska armija koja je na zapadni odbrek i ne je prisutna i ne je prisutna. So then when, when there was an invasion of the south, when Hamas entered, the army had to move units from the West Bank. But at the same time, there were rockets falling all the time. Thousands of them. So it took uh, between seven and nine hours seven and nine hours for the army to reach from the West Bank back to the... Back Gaza. To the Gaza. And in addition to that, the Hamas conquered, captured this, the central command, the, what is known as the Gaza command. It captured the Gaza command. So no one in the Gaza command could coordinate the movements, tell the army where to go, there was no communication and so on. Se gledajte, sada se spomenuti, ne znam, i Nagorno-Karabah i toa, da je Azerbejdžanci tako pručio, modelot na vojanje v Nagorno-Karabah, so je nemenci i taka na tomu i taka na tomu. I ako ovde, evo, ajde, sad finiširame, ne li, so razgovor od Gaza je nekoj prostor, golemina Skopje do Katlanovska banja, okolo 40 km, vidite, 20 i nešto km, 7 do 12 km širok i taka na tomu i taka na tomu. Gusto naseljeno, po gusto naseljeno od Hong Kong. I nešto ki je treba se sluči o tipot na Bahmut ili o tipot, ne znam, na Mario Pool ili nekoj takve ravoti, kaj što, ili, a lepo, što je v Sirije, kaj što je izrelska tarnija, ki je granatira, ki je granatira, ko gledate tamo razpolagati so podobro, a upremo to, što ga ima trusite, bi nekaj kako udirati so nekoj granati, cela zgrada se strušuva, je nema distorzije na cela zgrada, mi je to na kraj, ki je mora kopneno da se vlezi tamo, da se intervenira in to, ki bide, to ki bide klanica. I ako izrelcite, izrelska tarmija vleze kopni novo gaza, toga še otvorena gore, zapaden breg, Hezbola, granica so, granica so Liban i taka na tamo i taka na tamo, ki bide lesen plen, ki bide lesen plen za sitove nepratili, koji se na, koji se na sever, na, 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 like it is about to enter. Israel mobilized 360,000 people. And all the 360,000 are on the border. There are well over 800 tanks on the border. 
You must understand the border, all the border, is 47 kilometers. Oh. That's all. And so you have 800 tanks, 360,000 people. No, 47 kilometers. That's all. And you have this, all this concentration of army there, exactly like the Russian concentration before they invaded Ukraine. Yes. Exactly. But I am not quite sure that they will invade uh, Gaza. Um, because if they invade Gaza, yes, there will be war on all the fronts. And I, I don't think Israel can survive this war. So why are they doing this? Why are they creating this? Uh, I think they are using air force and artillery and, and so rockets and so on and so forth to flatten Gaza, to level Gaza completely. Tepich. Yes, they already destroyed uh, 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 Romalia, the, the, the most famous neighborhood yes, of yes. Gaza. They, Leveled it. There's nothing yes. left there. One building is standing. This was the most prestigious. Uh, there is no Arab world. That's a myth. It's a fiction. There are Sunni countries, Shia countries. Uh, each country hates, an, uh, hates the other country. Yemen hate, uh, hates uh, Saudi Arabia, Saudi Arabia. Site protiv site. Site ima natre... There is no unifying da, principle. Da. Znači, site ima natrešni konflikt, ima natrešni yes. problemi. Saudi Arabia... And so... Israel is playing this. Israel I... is playing this game. They, it's with one against the other, with the other against the one. It's normal. Israel I wants dobro. to survive. Velite, na kraj, ke bide konflikt od pomogu dva ta dela, levi od i desni od na, na, na Izrael. Yes, I think uh, whatever Gaza... happens, I'm, maybe I'm wrong, maybe they da. will... If, even if they invade Gaza, If they, if they invade Gaza, I think first they will level, they will flatten some part, and they will enter up to this part. I don't think they will conquer all of Gaza. They will make sure that no one is left, and they will enter, and this is for propaganda, not for real strategic goals. Yes. We entered Gaza, yes. not like, we entered Gaza. It will be propaganda. So I think they are, they are destroying parts of Gaza to allow them to enter to make a show and to go back. Yes. Conquering all of Gaza is suicide. Absolute suicide. Hamas has, uh, at the very least, at the very least, immediately 10,000 people with, uh, with massive ammunition, guns and so on. Uh, Israel will also attack Gaza from the sea. That is safe. Attack from the sea. A lot. And I think that's it. I don't believe anything more will happen. Because if they do conquer all of Gaza, they have war everywhere. Hezbollah, Syria, Jordan, uh, I mean, you name it. It's war everywhere. Israel will not survive this. As to your question, um, I think whatever happens, I may be wrong, of course, maybe they will conquer all of Gaza if they, are, they want to commit suicide. But uh, whatever happens, the next war will be between inside Israeli society. There will be absolutely civil war. <laughs> Formirana je posle Vtorata svjetska vojna. Niko, niko je ne spori da ima jevrijski izraelski narod, učitelno i Iran, neli, no sporad postojanje je izraelska država. Znači, arapski od svet, paradigma na funkcioniranje, tje se koji so se koji sakara i vojuva, eni sve neprijatelji ime Izrael i jevrijska država, ke može li jevrijska država da obstoji? Ebe, posledno prašanje. Izrael, the Arabs are right. Izrael is the last colonial outpost, outpost. The French had uh, the Pied Noir in uh, Algiers. There were more than a million French in the coast alone. But they accepted that they have to go home. Israel started as an experiment 150 years ago at colonialism. Israel was closely allied with colonial powers like United Kingdom, yeah? Balfour Declaration, and with the Ottomans also, and so on. And then colonialism collapsed. The paradigm, the paradigma collapsed. And Israel remained like a museum piece. It's like a reminder <laughs> of, of the past, you know. No one has empires, no one has colonies anywhere left, except, except is, Israel. Is the question, therefore, is can a colonial model survive in the modern world? That's the question, actually. Can we have a colonial It remnant? Is. Имало неколку крстоносни војни, кои католичките држави од Западна Европа ги отпарале за свет и од Гороб. 
за светиот Ерусалим или така натаму и така натаму, тоа е свето место. И арабскиот свет и католичкиот и христијанскиот. The Crusades, the Christian had for 200 years. They had a, state, a country, a state. But you see, the state of Israel is the number seven state of the Jewish people. Seven times we tried. This is the seventh time. We tried seven times. And we failed six times. Why would, we, why would I assume that the seventh time would be successful if we failed six times? And we failed for the same reasons. Exactly for the same reason. The people around rejected us. They did not accept us. The people around. And we started our existence as a nation by attacking local people. We, and we came from Egypt, we moved, and we entered Palestine, and we attacked the Amalekites. The, we attacked the local people. <laughs> it's the same model, 4,000 years. Same model. Displace the local people, establish a colonial outpost, and hope for the best. And it never works. Six times it didn't work. Сем, благодарам за овие објаснувања. Мислам дека добивме најдобра слика што де факто се случи во Израел, Газа и така натаму. Така, беше задоволство. Вредеше после 12-13 години ова интервју да го направиме. Многу среќа. Се надам ќе се видиме за некои подобри, за некои подобри работи. Фала многу. Thank you. Ова беше мислите во центар. Ова беше интервјуто со Сем Вакни, 75 минути, летна, веројатно како една или како две минути. Кога ќе помени така брзо едно интервју, тоа значи дека е добро интервју. Мислам дека многу работи стана појасни, многу работи разјаснивме, многу работи објаснивме. Сушно се свативте рамката во која се случи во овој израелски, арабски или израелско-палестински конфликт. Што ќе се случи во Израел, што ќе се случи со Моса, што ќе се случи со светот, сите тие работи, сега постои интервју, се многу појасни. До новото дружение, до новата емисија, пријатна вечер Македонија, каде да си.